use them, uh, their functionality, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to talk about a basic life support airway adjuncts and I'm also going to be talking about the advanced airway adjuncts. So let's go on a little ride real quick. All right, so what we have here, we have pretty much just about any airway that you're going to be seeing out in the field. Um, you're from your most advanced to your least advanced, I guess I would say the categories at least go. So right here you have what's called the ET tube or endotracheal tube. Now this tube right here uh, is what a paramedic would use and it actually goes into the trachea. So this right here, um, if you remember from the past video, this represents the tongue. This is the epiglottis, your trachea, which is your windpipe, and then your esophagus, which is right here. Now this would be if your patient is laying down, right? So right now your patient is laying down, facing up. So this actually goes into the trachea like so. Um, I'm not going to get too crazy about this because, again, this is an EMT course. It's not for paramedics. Uh, I just want you to know what an ET tube looks like. This way, if a paramedic asks you to get one, you know what it looks like and you can get it for him. Also, before this, before your, your paramedic actually gives or does the ET tube on your patient, intubates the patient, he or she may ask you to pre-oxygenate the patient. Now, when you're pre-oxygenating a patient, you're pretty much packing them with a bunch of O2 because you're about to take away all of their air and O2 for about a few seconds or minutes possibly. So when your paramedic says, hey, go ahead and pre-oxygenate my patient before I intubate my patient with this or any of these other things, you're going to be giving 12 breaths per minute. I'm sorry, no, 20 breaths per minute, which is one breath every three seconds. Again, it's 20 breaths per minute. So you're going to ventilate them at 20 breaths per minute, which means that you're going to be giving one breath every three seconds. And that's how that works. I'll get more into it in a little bit. Uh, then you have your three advanced airways. These are called supraglottic airway adjuncts. Also, there are also advanced airways. You have your combi tube, which is kind of being phased down in some places. And then you have your king LTD, which is kind of replacing, it is replacing the combi tube. And you have your LMA, which is used primarily in a hospital setting. But we also go over it. You just get an idea of how it works and what's going on with this. And then we have your basic life support uh, airway adjuncts. Your MPA, your nasal pharyngeal adjunct. And your OPA, your oral pharyngeal adjunct. And we're going to be going over this in a little bit as far as how it goes. Alright, so... Let me see if I can get this back. So those were your airway adjuncts that I wanted to talk about uh, for today. Um, we kind of did a little overview of what they are and how they work, but now let's really get into it and see how it works. The first one I'm going to be going over is the, it's going to be the OPA, so it's for the oral pharyngeal adjunct. Oral means for the oral cavity, the mouth, that region. Um, as, how, as far as how you would measure it, I know I, uh, I ended up uh, going over this in my last video, but I'm going to pick up where I left off. So you can measure this right here, let's see if I get this right. The, the way we measure this per uh, the textbooks that I teach at least, there's different ways and techniques of course out there, but it's from the tip of the mouth, so from the tip of the lips, to the angle of the jaw, right there, and that would be going with the anatomy, so the curve is curving with the anatomy of the airway, like this, so from the tip to the angle of the jaw, obviously this one's pretty small. There is another way to do it though, and it's upside down, so going against the anatomy of the airway, from the corner of the mouth to the earlobe, like this. Trust me, if it measures out like this, it's going to measure out like this. I personally like going from the tip of the mouth to the angle of the jaw because I'm a visual learner, I'm a visual person, so I like to I just go with the anatomy of the airway, and that's why I do it. So as far as this goes, what you want to do is that this is actually tucking the tongue up, it's moving it up that way is not obstructing the back of the airway because right now that tongue is flopped back on the airway. So let's see if I could show you. So right now the tongue right here, it's flopped back. It would be flopped back on the airway and it's completely obstructing air from getting in or out of the trachea. So what this OPA or pharyngeal adjunct is doing is that it gets there and it tucks it up and it opens up the airway. And that's how that works. 
All right, so I think we pretty much figured that out. Let's go ahead and move on to the MPA. The MPA, the nasal pharyngeal adjunct. You know what, real quick, as far as the OPA, there are two ways to put this in uh, the, the oral cavity and, and the mouth. One is you want to do your cross finger technique. So open the mouth using the cross finger technique per your textbook. That's how we go about that. And you want to put the, the OPA upside down, kind of scraping the roof of the mouth. Once you're about halfway in, you want to rotate it in place. The other one is going in from the side of the mouth like this at a 90 degree angle and once it's about halfway through then you rotate it down. Uh, the 90 degree angle one is a little bit nicer because you're not scratching the top of the mouth. Now you're not going to make anybody bleed severely as far as adults go but it, it, you, they will have some swelling, maybe some aftermath pain. Nothing major but I mean if you know that going in the side it's much nicer and you can do it, um, I suggest you do it. But it's really on your preference. Alright, so now we have the MPA. The MPA, let's see if you can see that right there. That right there we call the bevel. That's the bevel, the slant, the 45 degree angle. Usually we want to put this in the bigger nostril. The, the bigger nostril it happens to be the right one, usually. So as far as this angle, that bevel, that will go against the septum. The septum is that line right here. That's the septum of your nose. So you want to kind of glide that this against that and it's kind of it's, it's going to guide it also if you put it on the right side of the nostril it goes with the anatomy of the airway as opposed to if you put it on the left side you know taking into account the bevel it would be going against against the anatomy so it'd be kind of upside down going up so you always want to go with the right side first is the bigger one and then you just go straight back you don't want to go up because if you go up you might go into the sinuses and that's not cool there's been x-rays with, you know, some damage, not damage, but the MPA will end up up there. It's all curled up. It looks pretty nasty. So you want to go with the anatomy of the airway on the right nostril if you can. If you do have resistance, however, though, you want to, you can put it on the opposite nostril. Remember, bevel, bevel side on the septum. And then once you're about halfway through, you rotate it. That way it's with the anatomy. The MPA is now with the anatomy of the airway and it should glide in nice and neat. So go straight back, don't go up, straight back and you should be good to go. Lube it up. If you don't have the lube that it comes with, you can use the patient's saliva, don't use your saliva, it's kind of nasty. Uh, as far as this, it, it has kind of the same concept of, as the OPA does, but it doesn't tuck the tongue back. It just pretty much creates a little gap between the, the, in the back of your neck and the tongue, the inside. And that and it creates a little bit of a space enough for air to pass in and out. And that's how the MPA works. Alright, so now we're going to be talking about the other airway adjuncts. So now we have three advanced airway adjuncts that are called superglottic airway adjuncts. Let's go over the combi tube. The combi tube, I'm not going to hit over too much. It's being phased out. But you should know in case you go to a county or somewhere in Alaska. I'm not sure where you're, you're from. And you're using it. You never know. Never know. So these these three are called are called also blind inserting airway devices because you insert them blindly. You don't really pay attention as to where they're going usually. So where do you want these to actually land? Well, this this end right here, the distal end from the from the top, you want it to actually go in the esophagus. These are actually these three devices, the king, the combi tube, and the LMA are actually created and made to go into the esophagus and then you have these holes right here and these holes are going to be hovering over the glottic opening therefore that's where the name comes from supra supraglottic above the glottic opening and it sits there and it just kind of pushes air into where it has to go via these right here so i'm gonna take a little water break or juice break all right so These actually have two, this one has two pilot balloons. These are pilot balloons, the ones that are exterior or outside. You blow it up. Okay, 
So this gives you a, this gives you a good idea of how it actually works. If you have this in your patients, if this is in the esophagus, it's going to completely shut my esophagus. It's going to shut it down to where no air can get in or out of my esophagus. Therefore, I won't have gastric distension or inflation. And then now this big one is supposed to go in the mouth to cover any air. That way, air I mean to prevent any air from coming in or out of the mouth. So there, therefore, the only air that's coming in through this pipe has only one way to go, and that's through these holes, which is resting right above your glottic opening. And that's how these work usually. Now this one, it's kind of cool because it's it's kind of it has a fail safe because you can put it in either the trachea or the glottic opening. I mean the, the trachea or the esophagus, and no matter what, it's gonna work because you have two tubes. You have two lumens. It's a double lumen airway adjunct to where if for some reason you actually end up going into the trachea, inside the trachea, you if you use the second one, so they're, they're actually numbered one and two. Can you see that? One and two. First, if it goes down into the stomach, the esophagus, this end, then this is the one you want to use, number one, so you use it first. But if you don't have any uh, chest rise or fall, if you actually go into trachea, you want to go ahead and use this number two, and then you're at, it's pretty much like an endotrachea too. And that's how that works. And these pilot valves, if they're inflated, they mean that means that your integrity here on the bottom balloons, it should be good to go. So if these are inflated, then these are going to be inflated most likely. Not 100% uh, 100 safe on that, not 100% certain. But that's what it's there for. Alright, so let's keep on going uh, with the rest of the airway jumps. So now, as far as the King Airway, this one only has one pilot, one pilot balloon. So with these pilots, if this one is nice and bulgy, that means that these actually have air inside. You have two balloons for this one, but only one pilot, as opposed to the King Tube where you have two balloons, two pilots. Same concept applies for this one blind inserting device this one has to go in into the esophagus though however it doesn't have it doesn't have that safe like this one does where you could put it in either the esophagus or the trachea you don't have that option this one needs to go in the esophagus so once you put it in there you just blindly insert it into the esophagus this one will blow up in the esophagus so let's see if I can give you a better understanding all right so the king airway will go into the esophagus, it will blow up into the esophagus right there. This tip will blow up into the esophagus and it will completely obstruct it so no air can get in or out. Then this will lay right here in the oral cavity and completely just seal off the entire oral cavity so no air is getting in and out. That way the air that's coming out of this hole right here, there's a hole right there, there it is right there, is going into your trachea which is you know, the glottic opening goes into your trachea and that's what's going on right there. So that's the whole idea behind these. And then you have your, your spade shaped one at the LMA. This LMA airway adjunct, they all work the exact same way except that it's just configured, the shape is a little bit different when it comes to this one. This right here, this tip goes into the trachea and this will be in the oral cavity and this big old hole will be feeding air into the, the trachea, the glottic opening, because it's the glottic opening is the opening to the trachea. So this will be laying on, on, over the, the glottic opening, which feeds into your trachea. And that's how these work. If you have any more questions about these particular ones, go ahead and just uh, set, shoot me a message down below. Let me know, and I will make another video. Uh, if you want me to slow down or just actually break it down, the reason I'm not really getting into these that much is because as EMTs you won't be using these. Um, honestly, there are a few counties where you might be able to use the King Airway, but for the most part you won't. But it's just a good idea to know how they work and also in case your paramedic asks you to, hey, give me the King Airway, give me the ET tube, give me the LMA if you're using the LMA, who knows. Uh, at least you know what it looks like and you know what it does and you know how it functions. And you can actually maneuver your way around it. Um, and then this one, this one actually goes directly into the trachea, your paramedic has to visualize the vocal cords and then it's going to go in there. You have the balloon here, this 
first one actually will blow up inside the trachea and then your paramedic should be holding this if you don't have the device to hold it you always have to keep your hands on it that's the rule at least in California where I roll um, but yeah that's pretty much it and then remember pre oxygenate your patient 20 per minute which means that you're going to be doing it once every three seconds because you want to supply them with a lot of oxygen because you're about to take the oxygen away for a little bit until you get this secured into place. Uh, for now, I think that's it. It's, it's just a short, simple uh, telling you what's going on with the junks, how to use them um, in case your paramedic wants to use it. And let me know if you have any questions. If you want me to make a breakdown video of some of these area junks, I will. All right. Peace.